episode of The Man Cave. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial to get your LSPDFR to actually work for you. So if you're to that point where you're frustrated, you're willing to try anything to get the LSPDFR to work, then this is the right tutorial for you. I'm going to show you exactly how to get everything to work properly. Now, the biggest thing you're going to want to do if you already have Grand Theft Auto installed is just go ahead and uninstall it and you guessed it install a brand new copy of Grand Theft Auto 5 and you're gonna hate to hear that uh, if you have some particularly saved games they will still be there uh, you could always delete those two if you want to do a real clean install it's gonna be under C drive and then under my documents Rockstar games and then just find it there you'll find it if you can't find it just do a YouTube search to ask you know where does it say you know send your saved games to it's real easy to find but if it were me I'm gonna go ahead and start fresh you know with the clean install the very first thing I'm gonna tell you to do guys once you do get it installed is go ahead and get into the game and play a little bit and what I mean by that is I want you to get to the point where you're on the kind of the very first mission not by choice it's just part of the game and you're with Lamar and Franklin and you're going to go ahead and repo the cars you can skip some cinematics if you want you're gonna to get to Franklin's house and you're gonna go into this bedroom and actually save the game right there that's the very first save point that you need to have okay that's a must if you don't save your game there it's gonna you're gonna have to play it all over again till you get to that save game spot so I'm gonna be speaking to you as if it's a brand new newly installed GTA 5 and that's where we're going to start. Very first thing you're going to want to do is go to Google. And I want you to write these things down as I'm doing it. And there's a reason for all that because it, it starts to get a little confusing for some people. Now, some of you are vets, so bear with me. You already know how to do most of the stuff. But these are uh, tutorials mainly for beginners, okay? So bear with me. So what you're going to want to do first is download the following. Microsoft.net frameworks 4.6 that's the number one thing and you're going to also want to make sure it comes from an official microsoft.com site if you don't you're going to end up getting some toolbars and all these other things you don't need spyware uh, you'll never get spyware with this kind of stuff you're going to end up going to download I don't like to wait very long so I have to click here it's going to pop up down at the bottom left of the screen there you can see and then you're going to say yes it's going to take a second now notice the color that it's purple okay if you've never seen that purple color before when you downloaded .NET Frameworks then you know you have the wrong version already they kind of have a colored scheme going on right now Microsoft does and it just happens to be purple for the new ones for 2015 so you want to, if you have already has, have this installed and you're just trying to get your game to work, go ahead and repair it. If you do not have it, then go ahead and install it. I already have it. Next thing I want you to do is go back to Google, type in Visual C++ Redistributable for Visual Studios 2015. Literally type that out. Now it popped up real fast for me because I've already been here. So once again, it's going to be a Microsoft.com site. You're going to want to trust that. Go to the actual site. Once again, go ahead and download. And personally, I like to choose this one right here. I probably should be choosing this one, but I'm on a 64-bit. I just felt more comfortable doing this. If you're on a 32-bit, go ahead and go with this. It may even actually do you a favor and may have like a 32 or something like that on here. I'm not really sure because I don't have a 32-bit. But if you don't, regardless, go ahead and probably click right here on that one. Go to Next. And then I don't like to wait again, so click there. And then it's going to ask you to come to this page. And you're going to want to go to the download link right here in the middle. So click that. It's going to download bottom left of the screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this up again. And we're going to see another color pattern of it being purple. And uh, once again, if you don't have it, go ahead and install it. If you do, uh, go ahead and repair it. And then what I want you to do for right now is go ahead and uh, reboot your computer, okay? 
reboot the PC to make sure that these things take effect. All right, so we'll pretend like you just rebooted. The next thing I want you to do is go to Google again, type in script hook 5 download. So once you get that up and running, you got the script hook 5 download. I want you to look at the name of the site right here. It's dev-c.com. This is what most YouTubers uh, that run LSPDFR and other type of mods, things like that, they trust this one the most uh, because I've been paying close attention to their links that they have in their description. And, it, and there's a really big reason for that because this, the page itself is extremely smooth. There's not a lot of advertising. Uh, it's very straightforward. It gives you the exact release date. You notice that this is only from about three weeks ago um, as to the making of this video, September 27, 2015. You'll see the version number right there. You'll see the supported patches, those kind of things. Uh, the biggest thing is right there, download. So what I want you to do is download these straight to your desktop, and there's a reason why I'm telling you all this. So download that to your desktop. Go back to Google. And I want you to go to the LSPDFR site. And you can just type in LSPDFR literally, and you will probably have this pop up at the top. And yeah, notice that it's not really LSPDFR.com, it's LCPDFR. That's because that's GTA 4, and this has been around for a long time. But notice that they have an extra folder right here. It'll take you right directly to the section you need. The page will pop up like this. And uh, some of the key things you might want to look over here and see if it's something new's been updated. They are coming out with the 0.3 soon. And uh, if you want to actually take a look at that, uh, you can go to the banner up here at the top, click on that, and you can read all about it right there. There's a lot of sweet stuff that's coming our way. All right, so once again, you want to go to the download page. And then very simply, guys, you're going to look at the change logs. You're going to see how many different versions there is, uh, that there are, rather. And notice there's 0.2Bs. There's two of them. It's going to be defaulted to the one at the top. Go ahead and make sure you get the one at the top. For, for some reason, if you have that clicked, you know, make sure you click that. Make sure it's always the one at the top. Okay? That's the latest version. Download it. You're going to see three files. It's going to be either .rar, and that's for people like me that like to use WinRAR. There's a zip file that comes native with Windows 7, 8, and 10. Real common. Uh, they have compressors on there, zip file type compressors that's built into the operating system. Uh, not really a reason to use WinRAR. I just like to use it personally. It just uh, flows better with me. So download either one of these. If you are new to the game, download PDFR. Uh, learn how to pull people over, how to arrest, how to call for backup, those kind of things. Once again, download it onto your desktop. The next thing I want you to do is go to Google again and type in Rage Hook Plugin. Now, you always want to go to the site right here where it's literally rageplugginhook.net. And it's Rage Plugin Hook Cookie 8 is the name of the, uh, the title of the page, technically. And when you come here for the first time, it's not going to look like this. It's going to have an accept button or decline button. And what they're doing is basically asking you, is it okay to put cookies on, you know, your computer so that you can go in here and download things. And it's really just a polite way of asking. But to be honest with you, every single thing I just told you, all those pages just installed cookies on your computers, guys. You just didn't know it. So if you don't know what a cookie is, I'm not going to bother explaining. You can go look that up. You're going to want to go to Downloads, and you're going to get the latest version as of the making of this video. Again, it's September 27th, uh, 2015. You want to go ahead and get the top one, and uh, right now it's 0 0.26. So by the time you watch this video, it might be you know 0 0.35 or something like that. But always get the top one, and you download it, and then stick it right on your desktop again. Okay? So now we're going to get out of the web, and notice you're going to have three nice little zip files, or in my case, WinRAR files. Uh, WinRAR just happens to read zip files. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're going to actually take these and just throw them into a nice folder. That way it stays nice and neat here. 
And then what I want to do now is show people that do not know how to get to their their GTA 5 game directory. And uh, you, the veterans out there, you may just want to, you know, just kind of scroll through this a little bit. That's fine. Go to Start. And you're going to go to Computer. You're going to go to C Drive. You're going to go to Program Files. Now, if you're on a 32-bit system, go to this one. If you're on a 64, you're going to end up going to this one. And let's stick to this one. And if you have a retail version, you have an actual copy of the game itself, then you're going to go ahead and look for Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, folder right now. And you're going to see it. For us Steam users, we have to go through some more steps. And I'm going to show you a little trick here in a second too. So Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and notice there's two files. Um, one of them happens to be a copy. Now this is just my suggestion is to go ahead and literally, you know, if you know that the game works, guys, you've already played with Franklin, you know the game works, go ahead and right click, copy, and then paste it right here into this folder. It's going to take a little while, probably about 30 minutes or so. Get you a sandwich, beer, whatever, you know, if you're over 21. <laughs> and uh, just hang out for a little bit. Make sure you get the working copy onto your, you know, into this section right here, okay? And you'll thank me later, trust me, because if this stuff starts failing on you later, you're going to want to have that fresh copy. So I'm going to tell you a little trick here is right-click on the actual main directory send that right to desktop okay so now we can get out of all of this and check it out it's right here that's going to be the shortcut of the folder that you're going to be paying to close attention to the most you're going to open up the most you're going to install your plugins your scripts everything into this folder so why not have it as an actual shortcut now it's covering up my uh, Bugatti there stick that over there I just thought that looked kind of cool there <laughs> I want to I'm just drag it over here so now we have Grand Theft Auto, you know, 5 directory. If you have Windows 7, 8, or 10, slap it over there. And now we're going to start installing these actual folders right here. Here it is. All right, so what we're going to do first is start with LSPDFR 0.2b. Open it up, and I want you to left mouse click and select everything except for license which you do is you hold down the left control button and just unclick it or uncheck it rather and then you're going to grab everything and move it right into your directory right here. Make sure you don't put it in any folders and make sure you don't accidentally touch the launch keys or whatever. You just throw it right in here and it'll install it and do absolutely nothing right now because it's just installed into the directory. The very next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to overwrite the Rage plugin hook that came with LSPDFR. I don't know if you caught on to that. See that right there? And that's an old version. You want to see, look, look at that from July. Okay? So that's not good enough, guys. You have to have your own. So once again, that Rage plugin hook 0.26, that's the newest version. You're going to open it up, highlight everything. You're going to deselect license SDK. You're going to literally grab it throw it in right here and it's going to ask you to overwrite some different files go ahead and say yes and then go back here go into script hook plug plug in here or script 5 uh, it's going to be a native trainer but it needs it to run the game so uh, I like to use this particular one well pretty much you're going to have to have it so go ahead and open it up real, uh, real easy go to bin file select all three of these files and literally just grab them and just plop them right into your GTA 5 directory. Simple as that. Now, if you happen to have an old, uh, you know, script hook 5, uh, it's going to ask to override it. Pay attention to the date that the old one was, and if the new one has is a different kilobyte or megabyte, make sure that there's something different, and that way you know that you have the newest and greatest. But if you're doing everything I'm showing you here, then you'll have the newest and greatest and then you just replace everything. All right. So it's that's pretty much the, the most common thing right there. And now I'm going to show you another cool trick there is to go down to the Grand Theft Auto 5 directory. And you want to take the Rage plugin hook right there. And since you're going to be using this icon a lot,
go ahead and take my advice, right click right here, send it straight to your desktop. Okay? Now you take the right icon, literally bring it over here, and you're not done yet. You're going to actually right click, go down to properties, go to advanced, and then you're going to tick off run as administrator. And it's going to do a little pop-up window every time you launch the game that is okay, but it's more fluid and it tends to not make the game crash as much for most people. So I'm going to show you another little trick here. Since I've already been into the game with all my mods and things like that, but what about, you know, how do you get to the Rage plug-in hook uh, menu again? Some people can't get into the menu again. I'll show you a simple solution is when you open this up, it's going to pop up here, you know, asking for administrative, you know, privileges. You're going to say yes, and what you're going to do is hold down the left shift key until you get a menu. Now I'm holding down my left shift key right here. I'm waiting for the menu to pop up. And here it comes right there, okay? Now when you fire this up for the first time, uh, this is what it's going to look like, just like that. Now I'm going to show you my preferences that I like to have because it makes things go smoother, is I like to go ahead and disable this so there's no more enable plugin verification system because I trust most people at uh, lspdfr.com and I know they're not going to be giving me any malicious content. I also know that there's so many people modding out there. I don't need Ragehook to constantly try to verify and do pop-ups and yellow flags and all these other things uh, whenever I don't need it. So I like to uncheck that. I like to change this to F3, and the reason why is because the, the, simp, the script hook 5 uh, falls under the F4 key itself, and that happens to be the same console key for a rage hook. So if you press F4, it's going to bring up the rage hook console, and it's also going to bring up the native trainer and the background. So without having to do all that, just go ahead and change your Rage Hook plugin key, your console key to F3. This makes things a whole lot simpler, and that way you can bring up both. You can bring up the Rage Hook console, you know, to lo load a plugin or what have you. Press F3 again to make it go away, and you don't have to worry about that native uh, trainer popping up on you because that's going to be an F4 key. So you're going to go ahead and uh, actually going to go to plugins. Now notice right here that this is, for me, it's a bad thing because I've got a lot of plugins right here. It says, don't load any plugins to start up. Well, that sucks. We don't want that. We want to go ahead and you can select different ones if you want, but I want to go ahead and load all plugins on startup. Now, advanced uh, settings you don't want to touch, game settings you don't want to touch, but plugins, I like to go ahead and load in all my plugins at startup because I've got them installed and I want to make sure that the game loads them all up. So this will be take just a second. If you want to fast forward through this, probably about 15 seconds, maybe 20. <laughs> It'll take just a second to load here. And I'm going to tell you right now, once you go to LSPDFR, if you download plugins, which you're going to, uh, some people just say mods, that's fine, whatever. Uh, go ahead and just load one at a time. Don't get overzealous and do like six or seven and then load them all up and wonder why things don't work. Well, the reason why they don't work is because there's some conflict and guess what? You're not going to know which one it was. So rather than suffer through all that, do, do them one at a time, okay? Load them up one at a time and then fire up the game. It's not uncommon for me sometimes to download four or five different plugins, but I have to start the game up about four or five times. You want to make sure everything's fluid and running every time you do a major thing. And we just did pretty major things. We just installed LSPDFR 0.2b, we installed Script Hook, and we just installed you know, obviously the Rage Hook overwrite. We made sure that it's going to install our Rage Hook that we installed to overwrite the old one. You'll see the nice floating text there from the new Rage Hook. They've come a long way. It's pretty nice, the coding. If you want to fast forward for a few seconds, you can do that through this tutorial. And 
Right now it's just populating things. It's gonna load up my scripts. It'll take a few seconds. Now these are scripts that uh, I'm telling the Rage Hook to actually fire up. Now some of them are native, like police radio. Uh, it doesn't require you to do all this. Um, you know, it's not going to show up. Albo's mods like transporter, uh, traffic policer, arrest manager, all those things are all linked to the LSPDFR. So you're not going to ever see those in this list right here. So I am running a lot of those mods. The links will be in the descriptions. But if you're run wondering why all the rest of my links are not showing up or on this list on the screen, that's the reason why. It's because they're already linked to LSPDFR. So we're going to get straight in Franklin's house here. And if you heard that little crackle of a radio, that's a good sound, by the way. That lets you know things are... Uh... Oh, okay, Elbow. <laughs> Release! Release! Okay. That was a little message from Albo, I guess. Um, he's telling you that uh, there's oh, a new on. version. Um, he typically updates his mods pretty often, so that's the first time I've actually seen that. Okay, so let's check it out. I'm going to show you my new game capture card real fast. Slide it over here. We're going to go to work just for a, you know, probably about a couple minutes. Just to showcase the new capture card, I want to show. It's pretty sweet. And then I'm going to show you another little trick. Alright, we're just basically going to the nearest police station, which happens to be right here. We're gonna park right here in front of the fire hydrant. Nice, right? Police officer. Now what I want you to do is come over here. You're kidding. And you can go to any police station you want. Just make sure you don't get near the door. And about right here is good for me. Bring up your cell phone by pressing arrow up. And then go to the left. You wanna get see that quick save button right there? Go ahead and hit yes or enter. And go ahead and create a new save right at that point right there and you'll thank me later because you'll be right in front of the police station every time you load up the game all right so i'll go ahead and do it now myself so that way i can just be in front of this police station as soon as i load up my game so we're going to go over here and we're going to get into the police station and go on patrol for just about one minute probably not going to do much i'm just going to actually just drive around just to showcase the new game capture card i got the link will be in the description as well And I'm not going to be picky on the officer that I pick either, so don't judge me. I don't got a lot of cop cars installed yet, so we're just going right here. I said I'm just going to be driving around a little bit. Just showcase the uh, nice frames per second from the game capture card. It's pretty sweet. Attention all units, gunshots reported, and strawberry, multiple officers down, gunfire reported. Well, we gotta help out the fellow officers, come on. Thanks for driving off, partner. Damn. I think we got one more suspect here. No, she's already down. Is that he or she? I can't tell. All right. So, suspect neutralized. 
All right, games, guys, this will be it for the tutorial. I just wanted to show you just uh, how to get the game functioning again, and now you can go and da download your plugins. Like I said, take my advice, install them one at a time. Uh, I'll do another tutorial on how to install certain plugins if you want me to. There's a lot of plugins out there that require a little bit more attention, like police radio and a few other ones, but I'll do another tutorial video on those if you like this kind of stuff. So throw me a like. Get out of the way, man. I'm trying to do a ending of my video. So if you like this stuff, obviously I want you to press like. It helps motivate me to make more videos like this. Uh, if you like to subscribe, I upload videos, uh, not necessarily daily, but I'd say three or four times a week. I'm going to be pretty active. And uh, every, everybody, I hope this helped you a little bit in some way, form, or fashion. And if it did, obviously leave a thumbs up. Sorry about that. My sound card kind of cut out for a second there. But just wanted to show some appreciation to you all. Thank you for support. And uh, peace out, everybody. And like I said, like or subscribe, whichever you'd like to do. Appreciate it. Y'all take care.